Hey everybody and welcome to a pretty sunny day here in Markham, Ontario. Now today we have another exciting episode of Dude, I Love My Ride and it's all about that truck right there. That is a Ford F-150 but it's got some pretty unique features on it. Now we're going to meet Jay, the owner of that truck. He's going to tell us all about it, why he bought it and what he loves and maybe hates about it. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. So Jay, first of all, thanks so much for coming out here and meeting with us today. We really You're appreciate welcome. it. Uh, you got a pretty cool F-150 you want to show off. So I guess, first of all, why don't you tell us about the configuration of this truck? Because I do think that's sort of the most unique thing about it, right? Yeah, so when I when I started looking for a truck, I I wanted a short wheelbase vehicle. I wanted something. I, I'm at that point in my life where I'm hoping to be able to get away and do a little traveling, maybe some overlanding. And I wanted something that was short and nimble. Um, but I also wanted it to be capable. So, and when I was a kid, the the most capable vehicle you could get was a, you know, was a shorty, a regular cab, short wheelbase truck. Mm. So, and and everybody kind of stopped building them, right? Toyota doesn't make them, and Ram doesn't make them now for 2020. So Ford's the only one left making them. So, anyway, but in 18, or in, I, I bought it in 19, but in in 18, I was looking at these, and 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 I kind of come across this as as the idea this with the five liter with the snowplow package gives you the heavy duty it's like a heavy duty payload package truck you get mm -hmm. the 975 rear end um, I was working at the dealer at the time so I, I had them build it and they had really good staff there that really knew how to do stuff so so we took the front axle out of it we put the Raptor torsion differential in the front yeah limited slip yeah cool. yeah and um, I that terminology doesn't really do it justice. Fair, yeah. It, 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 You're right. It's, it's way better than a limited. like like the old clutch pack limited slip. Sure. But, but um, anyway, it works really, really well. It's so well, I almost don't ever use my rear locker. Oh yeah, right? nice. And um, so we leveled it and put the 34 inch tires on it. Sure. And the speedometer is only off by about two and a half percent. Not bad. So yeah, it's kind of a just a fun it, it was just a simple fun little build right again you're right about the wheelbase it's nice to have the little shorty wheelbase yeah and uh, it's also just cool to see red cabs you see so few regular cabs anymore yeah of course you got the ko2s on there and what size are the ko2s those are 34 by 10 and a half 17s okay. gotcha so they're uh they're a narrow basically the same width as the stock tire so it doesn't really affect your mileage like when you go wide that seems to affect fuel mileage more mm -hmm. and see there's a there's a vent that goes in here and comes out here yeah. that's a wind that's a, a, a like a wind skirt yeah and and so when you stay narrow it goes past the tire and if you go wide it hits the tire and it hits the forward lugs and that really affects your mileage yeah so anyway so i wanted tall and narrow and and that's when when i started looking bf's the only company that made that size so that's what i went with there are a couple of companies Kenda and Interco makes a super swapper that's 35 by 10 and a half. Okay. So, but that would anyway. have been a little more aggressive too. A little right? more aggressive, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, this is better for highway cruising. Yeah, and I wanted something that was quiet and capable, but it leaves me lots of space there. Like a mud tire is cool, but chains on all t on AT tires is yeah. kind of better. Sure. So I just the, that leaves me enough room. I can put chains on these tires. They'll work. They won't. The chains won't run into anything. Gotcha. And anyway, so yeah. So uh, talk to me a little more about your choice on the five liter. I mean, the thing with the F-150 has always been there's so many engine choices. You had been mentioning off camera a little bit about uh, how you were thinking about the 2.7 EcoBoost. So just yeah. sort of talk me through how you landed on the, the V8. I love that 2.7 EcoBoost and, and, and it works so sweet with the 10 speed. But like, and, and when you look at it, it's, it's a 2.7. So it's 10% smaller than these three liter diesels. It has 10% less torque than the 3 liter diesel and they pull like a diesel. So they're they're a really cool option because when you're running them light, they get almost diesel like fuel economy. Mm -hmm. So but anyway, when it, it just worked out that when I started looking there weren't any on the lots and I was I was going to buy during the sale and so I bought one off a lot. So when I started looking there was no 27s. I wanted rubber floors, I wanted 373s, I wanted the rear locker. It had to be uh, an FX4 and so i come across this truck mm -hmm. and this truck is a the snowplow package so 
that gives me the 975 rear axle heavy duty suspension gives me a fusible link with a button that you can wire your plow to but i'm going to wire a winch to it yeah that's nice like an accessory switch yeah so so that gives me kind of all the fun toys for off-road gotcha. and it makes it unique because it's the only way that you can buy a shorty with a 975 rear axle gotcha so the if only... if this package had have had a 27 it would have been perfect for it would have been perfect for me it. yeah i would have gotcha. snapped that up they don't but, uh, how is the five liter though how do you like the power out of it how do you like the drive of it i love it um you know it works great uh it pulls phenomenal but yeah. it doesn't have that down low push like a 27 has sure. but it when once it gets up to speed it really goes yeah and um yeah i i really love it and and, and like there's lots of stuff on the forums about guys having problems with oil consumption and i had that when i got it okay. we put the my dealer was really on top of the stuff they um they figured out that there was a an issue with the pcv valve we put a new pcv valve that was a different design in it and it basically fixed my issue nice. and um so yeah i've had that fixed since last april there's still guys out there buying trucks today that are seeming to have that problem but hmm. anyway that should be a fixed issue but no issue no gotcha now let's see how this five liter sounds all right fire it up <laughs> So this is an XLT, yeah. which is, is that the highest trim that I make in the red cab? Well, yeah, it is, but there's different levels of XLT. Yeah. So there's a 300, a 301, and but you, you can't get the 302 in a regular cab. Gotcha. So you, you notice here in the thing, these, these are blanks. They're blanks. You can't get heated seats in the regular cab. Yeah, there's just some things they don't offer, which is a shame, especially For here in Canada. There yeah. should be heated seats everywhere. <laughs> Ford's missing the mark there. We should have yeah. heated seats available on everything in Canada, and heated steering wheel would be uh, wonderful. I love the heated steering wheels. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, so nice. So, and of course, so in a 300A, which is what this one is, you didn't get the big screen. Gotcha. So, no gotcha. Sync 3, but if you went to a 301, you would have got that, but you would have got power seats and a few other options that, it, it jumped the price, and I really wasn't interested to, to go there with yeah. it. So, um, this was perfect for me, and I figured, you know, if I have this truck for 10 years, the technology is not going to be out of date because it's basically a, a, a radio system, right? Yeah, and simple. Yeah. So, but it gives me serious radio, which was a big deal because if I'm in northern Quebec or Mexico, I'm still going to get channels I Same can listen ones. to, right? Yeah, I get that. And uh, so, yeah, that was kind of the key there, right? Cool. So, and there's a couple features here on the truck. So, this is the fusible link button for the plow. So you run that, you press that button, and it runs 100 amps down to whatever you wire to it. Got and it. that's where I'm going to wire my, my winch. winch. Yeah, so, and then, so there's the traction control button. This is hill yeah. descent control, which got you got to get an FX4 to get that. Yeah. And of course, with the FX4, you get the skid plates and, and the off-road suspension. Gotcha. But this truck comes with heavy-duty suspension as well, so... Like, so you got yeah, off-road shocks, off, right? but you get heavy-duty springs. springs. and leaves, yeah, yeah, interesting. So Ford's got four levels of shocks and three levels of springs for both the front and the rear. So when you're configuring your truck, most of the time you don't really know what you're getting, but they have it set for what they know that they want the truck to be. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, very cool. And then and anything else in the interior that you really love or dislike? I like the storage. Yeah, that's pretty nice. There's storage underneath there. And then... Of course, the bench comes down. The bench comes down. And there's storage inside. On The XLT has storage inside. The XL doesn't. Which huh. gives you a softer armrest. Okay. Which is kind of nice. Yeah. But I like the storage. So I wanted yeah. that. Yeah, that's key. And I also wanted, this one has the keyless entry. Gotcha. So, also a nice feature. Yeah, if you go to the beach, you can leave your keys in the vehicle and come back and get in, right? And not sweat it. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Cool. And you know what? Speaking of storage, that's a great segue to go look at your bed. Because okay. you got some cool storage back here, too. Cool. Yeah. So. we got a pretty nice looking deck system in here. Yeah, and I, I picked that up used. Um, it's been a great system i you know you've got the drawers they got a drip tab this way so 
I've run this through the car wash. I've never had any water in nice. it. That's, that's crucial for the, sure. These uh, and they are lockable, correct? These well, you can buy locks for them. Gotcha. Okay, but but when the tailgate's in. closed and locked, you can't pull them out anyway. True. So they're they're locked then. You've yeah, got these little uh, spots here that you can throw extra, you know, fluids or whatever in. Nice. They're not as waterproof, but but they do work well. Got so. And there's four, one at each corner. Right? Nice, and then of course, yeah, you can still load stuff up on top of your deck, right? Supposedly 2,000 pounds, That's they say. That's quite a bit. Yeah. That's so. quite a bit. That's any ATV or snowmobile, no problem. Yeah, so, and yeah, no, it's been good. Uh, this, I got the, this was another feature that I had to have. Oh yeah, you love the step, huh? Yeah, I, I love it. It is nice. Because, you, yeah, you can just get in and out easy. And I was figuring in the future, if I have a camper system on it, it makes it easy for me to, you know, to get in and out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, so. and there's nothing else like it on the market. You know no. what I mean? It's uh, no. certainly a standalone feature, and if you want it, you got to go to Ford. Yeah, and you got to get it when you when you buy the truck because you can't retrofit it in. Yeah, because you got to get so. that that specific tailgate, right? Yeah, or you're you're, you're going to go junkyard to junkyard trying to find a smashed truck with a, where the tailgate's not smashed. Gotcha. So, because they're yeah they're expensive to. To buy. So now let's uh, talk a little bit more about uh, your dealer and then what you paid for the truck. I think people at home will certainly be curious after seeing it now yeah. how much you bought this uh, baby for. So uh, I think it's stickered. I showed you the sticker there. Yeah, it's, we'll show the sticker up on screen. Yeah, so I, I think it's stickered for 47.5 or 47.8, and I bought it in January. I think the discount was like $8,500 or something. So with the work that I had done to it, it was just over forty thousand dollars. You know, with the with the differential on the front and the level and the tires upgraded and everything done. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So, and that's of course Canadian dollars. That's for all Canadian our dollars. U.S. viewers. But that that doesn't seem crazy. It seems pretty reasonable. Again, for what is a a really unique truck with a lot of uh, versatility, a lot of opportunity to do things with this truck. Uh, what is the payload sticker on this truck? I know so, that's not necessarily what the real number is, but so when I bought it at Ford, it, the online it said it was eighteen fifty. Okay. But the sticker itself says uh, sixteen ninety one. It's right there. Got it. So I'm not sure if the difference between eighteen fifty and sixteen ninety one is what a full tank of fuel is. I don't know. Maybe uh, it's funny that even there's always a little bit of a discrepancy between that sticker and even yeah. what they tell you it is. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It could be something as simple as the radio system or right something that they tested that you have that they yeah. don't have or vice versa. And you can see by the sticker there that the these are what are they? So these are are 115 T rated tires. Mm -hmm. Everybody goes by well it's C or D or E. But really, it's the load rating that matters. So sure. I think these so are rated don't for like so much anyways. Yeah, the, the the original tires would have been rated for 2,400 pounds ish at 90 miles an hour, mm -hmm. and these new tires are rated for 3,200 pounds at 106 miles an hour. Gotcha. So it gives me a lot more, uh, yeah, you more know, redundancy payload. for payload and stuff, right? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, very cool. Well. Uh, Anything else you feel like you really want to share about the truck, Jay? I mean, it's uh, re reliability. How's the reliability been? Reliability's been, it's been fantastic. Good. Um, how, how long yeah. have you had it now? The full two years or? No, just about 13 months. 13 months, gotcha, yeah. okay. Yeah, and uh, I've got about 27 or 28,000 kilometers on it. And uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't had a single issue really to deal with. Good. I mean, like I mentioned, other than the, the little bit of fuel consumption in the first oil change sure. and then after that everything was perfect sure and you mentioned and, uh you're running about 12 or 13 liters per hundred average you think uh today in the 400 kilometers i did today it was a 12 4. okay i uh i think my vehicle average was 12 9. okay and um i i can get it into the 11s I've seen it hit 10, 9, but it never, like, it never stays there. Yeah, it's with the swift breeze behind you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and that's, like, coming here from sea level up to whatever this is, a thousand feet, like, over the mountains in Quebec, sure. uphill, and we had a headwind of, like, 70 or 80 kilometers an hour. I didn't get very, I got, like, 15 liters yeah, yeah. per hundred coming here. Yeah, yeah. But I'll probably get 11 and a half going back. There you go. Because it's downhill, and usually <laughs> there's a backwind, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, which is not too bad at all, especially considering the power you're getting out of the V8, right? Yeah, yeah. No, considering considering the the horsepower and the power to weight, like the the cool part about this is this this has a better power to weight ratio than a four door Raptor. Yeah. Right. Because it's 395 horsepower on regular gas. As you bump it up to high octane gas, it's like 407 or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, even at 395, so better power to weight ratio than a Raptor. Yeah, there's just there's so much less truck here. 4,500 pounds, right? Yeah, so, yeah. and then it's better power to weight ratio than a G wagon. Wow. Um, and and realistically, like with the limited slit in the front and the locker in the rear, it'll go anywhere those trucks will go. Yeah. And. Um, well, yeah. again, you mentioned the wheelbase. I mean, a Wrangler, right? Four-door Wrangler is just a few inches shorter, so yeah. it's almost right there. It, I've actually done that. I did circles around a guy's tire that had, like, 35s on his Wrangler. Yeah. And and this is inside of that. So his tires are wider, and my tires are, like, that much longer that way. But he, he had that much space on either side. Mm -hmm. So people say these are too wide for trails, but, but this is really no, no wider than a Wrangler with you know, with big 35s on them. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. Yeah, and then you have the versatility of the truck bed. Yeah. Yeah. The other the other sweet thing is is, is the the steering ratio is different on these short trucks than the big trucks. So it's a 20 to 1 steering ratio rather than 16 to 1. So they, they turn easy. They don't transmit, like, stuff through the steering wheel when you're off-road. Sure. And they, uh, this will cut a circle just about, I would say, about the same size as a Wrangler. Well, the advantage of the short wheelbase truck is tight turns, and Jay just really wanted to show me how tight this F-150 turns. And he's not wrong, it does really pull a tight circle. Very nice. So Jay, you're telling me about the drive modes here in the truck, man. Uh, you, you seem to really like them and you use them quite a bit, I guess. So why don't you tell me a little more about the drive modes? Yeah, I, I love the system. So so you've got, right here you can go through modes. And, and the, there's five drive modes on this truck. So like if, if you're looking at different vehicles, I, I already said this, but yeah. the, the G-Wagon is a good thing be, to, to look at because they've got three drive modes. This has five, yeah. plus a manual. Yeah. So if you go into, say, sport mode, yeah. it's, can you see that there? Yeah. Got it. And then if you go, if I double tap this, I get sport advanced track mode. And that's about the best way to get a, uh, a launch with this vehicle. Yeah. But then if I, if, I, if I put this in, if I put it into snow mode, it takes it out of that traction control sure, mode. Sure, of course. So anyway, it just, it just kind of does a really good job of, of kind of looking after all the, you know, making sure you're not making mistakes, but it gives you lots of different options. Yeah. So, and then I like, like, of course, you've got the locker here for the, for the back axle. Yeah. But when you're in four low, I, I like to run it in manual mode. And then you can pick first gear and it'll stay in first gear. Or maybe you pick second gear, you know. Um, and a kind of a neat thing about these trucks, I, I've never run it up to see exactly how high, but, but this 10 speed transmission in four low will get up to somewhere close to 50 or 60 miles an hour. Yeah, I believe it. So, like, if you're if you had a Rubicon and you were on a beach and you needed to get up over a dune and you were in four low, you'd yeah. have to stop. Yeah. Because you, you wouldn't get enough speed. speed to get up over it. Where and that's why they have that new Mojave. Sure. Because it has the different transfer exactly. case. Exactly. This gives you that, but because of the ten speed, the first gear so low, you get really low, and then and then. That top gear so high, you yeah. get really high. And there is a lot of customizable features in here which are great for off-roading, right? Yeah. Not not just having to be able to select your gear, but having the gear lockout, I always really appreciate that. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, and the other thing, this one came with the trailer brake controller. Oh yeah, and so, the Pro Trailer Backup and, Assist. And pro, I haven't have run that to use yet. That at all? No, it's, I haven't run uh, it. It'd be interesting with the short wheelbase cool. to see how it works with the short wheelbase <laughs> yeah. compared to a long truck. Sure. Because I have run it in a long truck before, but, um, yeah, it, so this is rated on on 115C tires. Sure. It was rated for 9,700 pounds of towing. Right? Gotcha. So, yeah, I could easily put a camper on this and still tow an 8,000 pound other trailer with me, right? Oh, yeah. Well, perfect. I think that's a ton of great information there, Jay. 
Yeah. Once again, man, let me well, say thanks. thanks so much for coming out. Thanks for having and me. It's, we, we really appreciate it's an, it. It's an honor.